Hey everyone. So we are here today with a new topic of special senses that is vision, which is very important when we talk about exam point of view and applied both. So in this video, we'll be talking about retinal layers and photo transduction, which means how basically different receptors present in retina, they convert the light into nerve impulse and that nerve impulse is transmitted to brain. So because of that, we see where is light present. Okay. Now let's see how. To know the retina, first of all, we should be knowing the structure of eyeball. So this is a simple structure of eyeball. Having three layers, sclera, anteriorly, which is called cornea, the choroid, which is having the vasculature, and the innermost retina, which is having the nerves and all the photoreceptors present. Photoreceptors, that means which are receiving the photon signal. Okay, these are called photoreceptors. If you see structure of eye, on the other hand, via suspensory ligament, the lens is hang here, and which is converting the whole cavity into dividing it into two cavities anterior cavity and posterior cavity okay so anterior cavity is further divided into anterior chamber and posterior chamber so anterior cavity is filled with the aqueous humor and posterior cavity is filled with the vitreous humor there is an area optic disc which is where which is nothing but where that all the nerves are leaving the eyeball so this is this is optic nerve Okay, this optic disc is called, called blind spot because we don't have any photoreceptors here. Okay, so this is a simple structure of eyeball. So let's see how basically retina look like if you see microscopic view of retina. If you see a small structure in a zoomed view, the retina look like having a number of layers. Fine. In this layer, to learn, this is very easy to learn all the num name of the layers. But the most important thing you should be knowing the arrangement part. So photoreceptors are not present toward the vitreous humor from where the light is coming. Instead, the photoreceptors are present in the innermost layer toward choroid. Okay. So the light first penetrates through all the layers and then the photoreceptors, they sense the light. Okay. We'll see how this is the light. First of all, you should be knowing what are, what is name of these 10 layers and how we can remember them. Okay, so light will be traveling through all the layers and it come to the innermost one. From inner side, so from choroid we are seeing which layers are present. So as we can see the eye, the innermost is this one. So toward vitreous is innermost and outer one is toward choroid. Okay, okay. so let's start the layers. So this, uh, as you can see, there is a layer of epithelium. This is nothing but pigment epithelium on which we have different photoreceptors present. Photoreceptors as we have three layers of photoreceptor. One is the outer segment. So photoreceptor outer segment. Then we have nucleus. So we have outer nuclear layer. Then synaptic terminal of photoreceptor which makes some plexus on other cells. That's why we have outer plexiform layer. This is very easy. So outer segment, nucleus, outer nuclear layer and outer plexiform layer. Then we have other cells and we have again nucleus of those cells, so inner nuclear layer. And again those cells are forming plexus on the ganglionic cells. That's why this is inner plexiform layer. So this is very easy if you want to remember these cells. So photoreceptor layer, outer nuclear, outer plexiform, inner nuclear, inner plexiform. And ultimately they synapse on ganglionic cells. That's why we have ganglionic cell layer. And they form now, which ultimately form now fibers. So optic nerve is formed here by joining all the nerve, nerve fibers here. So this is nerve fiber layer. Fine. So this is all about the 10 layers of retina. So from outer side, here you can see this is choroid, then pigment epithelium, then photoreceptor layer, then nuclear layer, plexiform layer, then inner nuclear layer, inner plexiform layer, ganglionic layer and nerve fiber. Fine. So this is all about layers of retina. Now we know that there are two types of cells. If you see in layers of retina, there are two types of cells, rods and cones. These are rods which are rod shaped as you can see. These are cones which are cone shaped. Okay. So these photoreceptors are divided in three things. One is outer segment, inner segment and synaptic terminal. Outer segment differ in both the cells. One outer segment of cone is cone shaped and as you can see the membrane is invaginated inside. Okay. On the other hand, rods which are rod shaped, 
the outer segment is having a separate disc here uh, you can't see membrane invagination in fact there are separate discs present to increase the surface area okay so that maximum light can be received on these surfaces fine why we need then two cells rods and cones why why two type of photoreceptors are there why rods can't play the whole role okay so let's see rods are basically the rod shaped they are sensitive for low intensity wavelength they are more sensitive that is only one photon can excite them and responsible for scotopic vision that is dim light as they are responsible for low intensity wavelength on the other hand cone are cone shaped they are responsible for high intensity wavelength and responsible for photopic or color vision bright light they will be firing now let's see the uh, the wavelength again so as you can see the blue graph is showing the sensitivity of rod cells on the other hand there are three type of cone yellow green and red three type of cones are present for different wavelengths so on higher side higher wavelength cones are uh, activated and on lower wavelength rods are activated that's why they have different work different functions now to know how basically the light is perceived at this photoreceptor level and how they are converting it into a nerve impulse now let's zoom one disc of rod cell so if we zoom this area this this is the outer segment of rod and as you can see inner side this is disc having a lots of protein present so as light is coming there are cascade of reactions uh, occurring here which is ultimately causing some opening of some ion channels which is causing cationic influx and depolarization but in photoreceptor the scenario is different here we don't have depolarization now let's see these cascade of reaction again okay so if light is coming on these uh, disc of rod cells we have a rhodopsin pigment okay which is a photopigment rhodopsin rhodopsin have retinal in a bound form okay so as the light is coming the retinal which is 11 cis retinal it changes the configuration and become all trans retinal okay as this happens there is a bound gpcr g protein coupled receptor transducine which is bound with this so as the conformation changes because of light this transducine which is a nothing but gpcr it it dissociate the alpha subunit of transducine and that alpha subunit of transducine it activate some enzyme here the enzyme is phosphodiesterase pde phosphodiesterase the work of phosphodiesterase is it convert the cyclic gmp into gmp okay so the cyclic form is converted to regular g gmp okay now what happens if phosphodiesterase convert it into gmp so the concentration of cyclic gmp decrease in cell but on the membrane we have sodium channels which are basically dependent on cyclic gmp concentration so as cyclic gmp concentration decrease when there is light falling on rhodopsin and activation of phosphodiesterase occur so cyclic gmp concentration decreases in cell which leads to closure of the sodium channel which were already dependent on cyclic gmp so if cyclic gmp increase sodium channel open but here when light is there light because of light cyclic gmp concentration decrease which lead to closure of sodium channel as sodium influx is not happening it lead to repolarization so this is the only cell in our body which is repolarizing okay because of some uh, stimulus so here light is the stimulus and ultimately hyperpolarization or repolarization occur in photoreceptor cells now why this repolarization is important because now we have seen different layers we have seen layers of retina that here photoreceptors which are either fire on whenever there is light so whenever there is light they don't fire okay and whenever there is light they will fire so in dark they will fire and in light they will not fire they will be hyperpolarizing they will be repolarizing okay so ultimately there are different bipolar cells there are different type of bipolar cells which are on cells off cells so depending on stimulus from 
these photoreceptors, the signal is going to bipolar cells. So whenever there is light, they repolarize and repolarization lead to stimulation of on bipolar cells. If they depolarize, then off bipolar cell will stimulate it. Okay, so ultimately on or off cell stimulate which give further nerve impulse to ganglionic cell and optic nerve thereby. Okay, so ultimately what is retinal output? Retinal output is nothing but the firing of on or off cells wherever we have light. So as you can see in first image, central illumination. So in center we have light. Okay, so on cells and off cells. So on cell fire when a, for light and off cell fire for darkness. On the other hand here off cell fire for basically off cells are firing for darkness. Okay. So as you can see light in light off cells are not firing. That's why the complete retinal output is given because of the whole pathway. Okay. So at last we will be talking about in next video we will be talking about what is basically visual pathway and how different how basically signal is transmitted and how basically we are seeing different components of every object every image because we will be talking about color also we will be talking about the shape size okay contrast of colors so we will be talking about everything in next videos. So please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel thank you so much for watching.